Good evening everybody, Flack is back and I have been granted access on the vehicle testing server. Now, I was warned that it is going to be a little bit buggy. Okay, got some disappearing rocks. Got some deer posses going. Don't do it bro. Don't, don't do it bro. Was it worth it? Was it? Now, where do we find the components for the engine? Where do we find the vehicles themselves? Ooh, hey look, walking low grade. Ah, here we go. Okay, so the engine components, from what I can tell, is found inside the toolboxes. I've checked boxes, I've checked barrels, they are not there. So all the toolboxes, you can find those low quality engine components. They look very rusted. At the outpost, you'll find two new vending machines right next to the research table. And inside, you'll find these medium looking engine components. They look slightly shiny, as well as one of these vehicle ramps. And inside the other one, you will find the higher quality components. These ones are the top dog, and they are quite pricey indeed. And much like the minicopters, the vehicle chassis spawn alongside the road. In fact, the only thing you can do to the vehicle chassis in its current form is push it, noticing the ultra realistic physics. I played around with it for a few seconds. One hour later. Until I moved on to find other types of vehicle chassis spawns. I found a bunch here, played guard and changed the time, and here we go. Having a look, you can see these are all individual modules on a vehicle chassis. The randomly spawning vehicles have massive amounts of combinations with regards to their length, their size, and the modular items installed upon it. But how do we get these rolling carcasses back to our base? How do we get them functioning? At the moment, all we can do is push them, and if we had some metal fragments, we could repair them, much like we're repairing a wall. Now, at this stage, one isn't required to repair the vehicle fully in order to make it functional, but at this stage, I will recommend repairing it slightly so that somebody doesn't kill you as you get the vehicle running. Now, what exactly is required to make this vehicle run? Firstly, we need the chassis, which come in the variant of 4, 3, or 2 module. More on that later, but for now, let's just say we need the vehicle chassis. Next, the chassis requires two modules, the engine and a place for a driver to sit. Random vehicles spawn random modules on them, so you might find find things like a flatbed, a big water tanker, or even storage boxes. And then finally, that engine module requires five main components. A carburetor, pistons, a crankshaft, valves, and spark plugs. Now this is going to sound a little bit complicated, I will go more in depth later, but just to get this vehicle running, you're going to need one of each five component groups. So this larger motor has two spark plug bays, two valve bays, one carburetor, one crank and two pistons. All that is required to get the vehicle moving, although not very efficiently, is one item per one of those five categories. So if you have one valve or one piston or one spark plug, the vehicle will still function, albeit in a much weaker condition. Pop some low grade in the rear and you are finally ready to go. Ha <laughs> ha It's alive! Now I can finally get me a honey! Cruise the streets! Hey gorgeous! How you doing? Fill it up please! Oh my god, I'm so alone. Oh hey look, he wants to be friends! Why does everything I touch die? Oh look at this one! It's got rear seats and front seats. I'm gonna take this one home rather. Give a bit of TLC to this bucket of bolts install literally the smallest amount of components needed to make this vehicle run. Fire it up. Wow, you can actually feel how slow and inefficient the vehicle is. The acceleration, the vehicle feels heavy and slow with all the old unfinished components inside the engine. Ooh, so here's an example of the engine components on the modular system. So my vehicle has an external engine, which is more powerful. If I go over to this one, it has an engine built into the driver cab and it's only 70 kilowatts. The engine on my vehicle, which is an external engine, a larger capacity one, has 105 kilowatts, making my engine faster, although it consumes more of the chassis. Okay, let's get back to the garage. Home sweet home. Okay, I'm just gonna hop out here quickly, give you a bit of a look at my garage. It's not tricky, I swear. And there we go, it auto centers the vehicle on the ramp. Whilst the vehicle is up on the ramp, this is the only way one can remove, add or rearrange different modules on the vehicle. Now when we lift the vehicle, you'll see this little control panel on the lower right hand side of the screen. It shows exactly how many modules are allowed on this vehicle. You can see a diagram of the vehicle chassis and it's got three dots. The three dots indicate that this is a three module chassis, meaning you can add three different modules to this particular vehicle. This rear passenger cabin is considered a single module. This engineless driver cabin is considered another module and an external engine bay considered the third module. This tiny one off to the side is considered a two module car, you can see by the two dots. And on this side here, the long boy is a four module car, much longer, and you can see that it has four open spaces available. 
The three body car also has four spots, but you can see the fourth one is grayed out. And on the small boy, two of the slots are grayed out, meaning you can only place modules in the open spaces. Alrighty, let's head over to the three module car. I'm gonna lift it up and as you can see, and I'm gonna drag the middle module off and it instantly gets removed from the vehicle. I repeat the process, so it removes the back module or the passenger cab off the vehicle and it also again immediately updates. Now the front module I'm gonna try and remove and you'll see it doesn't allow me to drag this module off of the vehicle. I first have to click take internal items. Once I do that, all the internal items inside the engine make their way into my inventory and it now allows me to remove the engine module from my car and now we have nothing on our chassis. If I look at the engine components, you'll see these shiny boys are the high quality items. They come in three tiers, there's high, medium, and low. If I go into this box, you'll see a little bit more of a dull looking item. These are medium quality components. And over here, we've got the rusted ones. These are the ones you find along the road and they are low quality items. There are different combinations that you can use. You don't have to use all good, all medium, all bad. You can also use some good, some medium, some bad. Obviously, the more items that are good or high quality, the faster and more fuel efficient the vehicle will run. Now I'm making my way over to the three module chassis. I'm putting down a front motor onto the front of the vehicle over here. And once I access that engine, I have the ability to use any type of engine components I want to, to make up a complete engine. Bearing in mind, like I said earlier, the more high quality the item, the better the performance and fuel efficiency of the vehicle. I can use a high quality valve with one of these older valves, or if I wanted to, I've got a spark plug here, it's old quality. I can take the old one away, it has 61 acceleration, I put a new one in place and now it has 70. Again, the more complete your motor or the more high quality components you have, the faster it drives, the faster it accelerates and the more fuel efficient the vehicle becomes. Now let's head over to our four module cab and we'll see exactly how it works. You can see I have four slots here and I can use any models I want to. Inside my module box, I have a range of different types of cabs. I also have an external engine and also attachments that I can add anywhere onto the vehicle. This model, for example, has two dots on it, which means it occupies two spaces. The models with one dot occupy one module slot. The modules with two dots occupy two. So let's say, for example, I wanted to make myself a nice big pickup truck. Now, if I look at the vehicle diagram, the front over here indicates this is the front of the vehicle and the back side is the back of the vehicle. I'm going to grab myself an engine module. I'm also going to grab myself a double slotted flatbed that takes up two modules. And then in terms of the cabs, I'm gonna have a look here. This is the rear seat, no, not that one. This is a cockpit with an engine and this is a cockpit without an engine, the cockpit vehicle module. I'm gonna use that one. So now I've got my engine, I've got my cockpit and I've got a double flatbed. I lift the vehicle up and if I place the engine bell on the front, it appears on the front of the vehicle. Then I take the double cab and if I put it here, you'll see it occupies two slots because it is a double module, naturally. And you can see it's now fitted to the back of the vehicle and it's ready to go. Well, I first need to put my cabin on, place the cab on, and there we go. We've got ourselves a pickup truck, a nice big pickup truck that is ready to go. You can see I climb inside, but I can't start the vehicle. That is because the engine has no engine components inside it. Now this vehicle is extremely customizable. If I was to lift it up on the ramp and take the engine bay off, I can move the cab forward, I can move the flatbed a bit more forward, and then I can move the engine to the back, and now it more resembles a truck. Any module can be placed in any order on the chassis as long as there is a motor and a place for a driver to sit. Then it becomes drivable. The rest is up to your imagination. Those with a keen eye might have noticed that one of the cockpits in my box has an engine built in. Now, let me lift up my hybrid truck I just built. I'm gonna take off the old cabin. The old cabin was just the standard cabin. The one that I took out of my box now already has an engine built into it. So I'm gonna move the external engine to the front. I'm gonna take my engine cabin and I'm gonna place it at the back. And now I currently have a vehicle with two engines. This engine in the cab is a 70 kilowatt motor and it's slightly slower than the external one. But the point remains, I now have two engines capable of running on the same vehicle. Now you're probably wondering to yourself, can I make both engines run at the same time? You are absolutely correct. I'm gonna place nice high quality components in this engine and it now has 100% efficiency. I'm gonna put in some fuel and I will be able to make this vehicle run. And it starts up fine. Now you're probably wondering to yourself, hold on, I've got two open slots on this vehicle. Can't I technically put in more engines? And you again would be absolutely right. Now I'm gonna move my engine cab more to the front of the vehicle for the center of weight distribution. I'm gonna take two additional motors and now I'm gonna place the two motors behind the cab and a motor in front of the cab, as well as an engine cab, making this a four engined monster truck. I'm gonna fill all the engines with high quality components to make it as powerful as possible and you'll be left with a beast that is absolutely incredibly powerful. Oh, the sound of this motor is very beefy. A lot of power. Okay, let's take this bad boy for a drive. I can already feel immediately that it is so long and so heavy. I just touch on the accelerator and the vehicle absolutely launches forward. Ooh, okay, this is 
basically uncontrollable. Extremely fast. It launches quite literally faster than a minicopter. Oh! Okay. Yep. Yep. I planned that. Yep. Ugh. Okay, this is not working. Ooh. Okay, now. It's basically undrivable. It's too quick. It's too quick like this. Let me get this bad boy back into the shop. This should never be attempted ever again. Four engines inside one vehicle. It's too long. It's too fast. Nope. Absolutely not. Now in our box we have many different kinds of cabins. We've got the armored cabin. I very much like this one. I'll explain to you in a second how that works. We have the empty cabin which I showed you before. We've got the engine cabin which I just placed now. We have a single module passenger box which holds two people. And we have a double passenger module box which holds four people. The armored module for example with an external engine and let's say for example a storage box makes this. We'll drop on the armored cab, put an engine on the front. Climb inside and you will see this very bad visibility cabin, however the thing I like about it is it's got these openable slots. I do imagine the person using this is going to be driving into battle and will need maximum protection. We're going to lift this bad boy up and at the back of the cab we're going to put down a storage box. The storage box, as the name suggests, holds your items for you. It offers you 6, 12, 18 slots of storage. Pleasure. Add a second box if you'd like to double that to 32 slots. If you're interested in an armored high speed loot transporter, take off one of those boxes and add a second motor. Now you have the speed, you have the armor, and you have the storage space. Do you need to transport a bunch of clan mates around and you don't have enough seats for them? Put on a flatbed and haul them like farm animals. Are you thirstier than my ex-girlfriend? Unlikely, but if you are, you can put on a double tanker module. This allows you to store thousands and thousands of liters of water. Enough hydration for even the thirstiest people. No, but seriously, I took this thing to the lake yesterday. I hooked up 10 pumps and I pumped it straight into the truck. I literally waited overnight and it barely filled the thing. It, it can hold so much water. And just to give you an idea of just how customizable it is, I'm going to take off the cab, put the water tanker in the middle and the cab at the back. Why you would do this, I have no idea, visibility wise, but it just shows you that you can do literally anything with this. Now you're probably wondering, if you can have three engines, could you technically have three driver cabs? And unfortunately, you're right, three driver cabs and you've got yourself an absolute monster horror bus. Now, this is the funny part because, yes, you can have three drivers in this vehicle. I'm currently in the middle cab and you can see I'm going to start this vehicle up. I can physically drive it from the middle of the vehicle however unfortunately if I move my way to the back seat you can see I can still open up the windows and I too can drive so look out for a armored horror bus coming to a server near you with six clan members trying to steadily roll the same vehicle and absolute chaos ensuing behind it one of my particular favorite combinations is the minibus taxi. Now in South Africa, we've got something called the minibus taxi. I'm going to put the small engine cabin in the front. I'm going to put a passenger cabin in the middle and I'm going to put a dual passenger cabin at the back and we'll be left with an accurate representation of the South African taxi service. I'm not even joking. This is how our taxis look and they are completely safe. The two module vehicles are quite comically small. They only have space for two particular modules. And to me, they look like clown cars. I can put an armored piece on the back and I can put a motor in the front and you are left with this mini battering ram. Or better, you can put an engine cabin on the front of the vehicle and on the back, you put a small little flatbed and you are left with probably the most adorable pickup truck in the world. I like this little thing. The nice thing about the pickup truck is you can load it with your cargo and you can drive around to your heart's content. They are cheap and they are funny as hell. The best way to get hold of these modules is of course to find some roadside carcasses, repair them up to the state where they're drivable, put in some cheap engine parts and drive them home. Once you get them home, strip off those parts and keep them in your storage boxes. The low quality and medium quality engine components are learnable, however the high quality engine components are only unfortunately purchasable by the outpost. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a much better understanding of how everything works in the world of the vehicle modules. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comment section, I will be sure to answer them immediately. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, flack out. So it turns out that out of all the people that watch my video, about 16% of you guys are subscribed to me. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe to the Mr. Flack channel, and I will love you long time. And of course, the final and most ultimate shout out goes out to my beautiful patrons. These guys, wow, you know, I don't even know what to say. They support me in ways that cannot be, well, I'm sure you can measure it. They give me fucking money, don't they? Well, guys, thank you so much for your support. I love you very, very much. If you guys would like to join the Patreon squad, follow me on Twitter, join the world's sexiest Discord, follow me on that purple streaming service, 
or view my barren Instagram that no one actually likes, please be sure to click on all of my social links in the video description below. And finally, the Mr. Flag server is now officially moved to South Africa. If you want to join the Mr. Flag server, look out for the IP or the server details in the description of this video. Thank you again so much for watching, you gorgeous motherfucker. As always, Flag out.